This is Trumpet Jordy Jazz Jam number two, Sea Jam Blues by Duke Ellington. Everybody. Glad you're here. Welcome and let me know if you can hear me because we just want to make sure that the audio is working. Ha! Here we is, Paul. Good to see you. All right, yes. So it's working. That's wonderful. Just I'm just really glad the sound is working. So let's keep jamming and then we'll get started in a minute. All right. Welcome, welcome everybody. Keep coming on in, we'll get started in just a second. Oh yeah. Yes. Uh, 
let's speed up the tempo a little bit. Improv a little faster. Here we go.
watching. Who is watching now? Oh, good. We got five people watching here. Thank you, Paul. Really appreciate that. All right, we'll just do like two more choruses and then we'll get going. Yes, there we go. Hope you like that. It's kind of fun. Yeah, it's a workout too if you just keep going and going and going. So yeah, we're gonna talk about C Jam Blues today. Um, let me head on over here. Whoo! And catch my breath. Yeah, in case you haven't guessed, this is Trumpet Jordy Jazz Jam number two, C Jam Blues by Duke Ellington. All right, yes, yes. So, basically let me introduce myself. It's like, I'm Jordan Hoffman. I'm an army band trumpet player. Uh, I'm a trumpet teacher locally and on Skype. You can go to my website at learnlytrumpet.com to learn more about that. Let's see what you guys are saying over here. Let's see the comments. All right, Paul, so good to see you here. Yeah, I hope you guys like Sea Jam Blues, or at least have heard of it before. I hope you like Duke Ellington. You know, the guy who teamed up with uh, Billy Strayhorn to write uh, Take the A-Train. So he kind of knows what he's doing. Great musician. Wonderful musician. Writes great stuff. So yeah, okay. I'm glad we got some people watching here. That is wonderful. I'm glad the sound is working. Everything's working great. So yeah, let's keep moving on, moving on this. You're probably wondering, or at least you've wondered at one time or another, what horn I'm using. <clears throat> so basically, this stream is sponsored by Callet Trumpets. This is my Callet Custom Trumpet. This is my studio artist model, right? Um, Callet Trumpets, oh my gosh, Callet Custom Horns, they make wonderful wonderful trumpets that really slot excellent they're horns that let you do exactly what you want to do and uh you know they're in tune they're wonderfully in tune this is the most in tune horn that i've ever played uh, i love my uh, callet studio artist trumpet here so yeah you can check them out over here at callet.com also at callet.com while you're over there you can check out Northern Brass Mouthpieces, right? So Northern Brass Mouthpieces, great mouthpieces. Um, and they are by GR, they're Northern Brass Mouthpieces by GR. Oh, and let me show you the Callet logo here for a second, just so you can see that. It's like, yeah, .com. So yeah, Northern Brass Mouthpieces by GR. It's like, they are the lead trumpet player's mouthpiece, right? And not only the lead trumpet player's mouthpiece, and not only are they great for upper register playing, you know, the kind of playing that I really love to do, um, they're made also for people who don't quite always fit into lead mouthpieces, right? It's like I myself, <clears throat> I myself have a hard time <laughs> actually getting lead mouthpieces to work, right? It's like they're usually, it's too steep of an alpha angle, or it's like they're just too shallow, like they're, I want a lead mouthpiece, 
but I don't want to bottom out on it, right? I want it to actually fit me. So Northern Brass mouthpieces is actually where you should go if you're in the same boat as I am. Great pieces, excellent resonance. You can get all the, uh, you, you know, you can get different sizes and you can try them out and find which one works best for you. You can also get them at, over here, <laughs> it's backwards, Callet.com, right? So yeah, check those guys out great mouthpieces all right so yeah it's like one last thing to say is that i always appreciate the super chat donations i really do guys um it is a lot of work to put these streams together <laughs> like like a lot of work <laughs> ask my wife um so yeah i really appreciate the donations some of you guys have given in the past that's that just you know makes it easier to do this um and remember that the highest bidder gets to decide what the next song will be right so if you donate a dollar right now then it's like you can choose which tune you want me to do next <clears throat> also you can donate through paypal the link is in the description if you'd rather donate through paypal if you like that way better you can totally donate to me that way um the link is in the description below you just have to click the little arrow to have the description box drop down so you can see the link and everything and uh, some of you guys uh, donated, donated through PayPal last time, and I really, really, really appreciate that. So thank you so much. Yeah, the link is in the description. All right, we're going to keep moving here. We're going to talk about the artist, right? Actually, let me, let me check the comments first. Then we're going to talk about the artist. We're going to talk about Duke Ellington. So yeah, let's see here. I'll have to think about Cal. It looks like a really awesome horn. That's right. Yamaha Zeno. Yamaha Zenos are nice horns. They really are. Uh, you know, I do I do like Yamahas. Um, I've tried them both, and it's like, I do like the Callet better, though. Uh, it's a little bit more in tune. It's a little faster. It's a little bit more resonant. Just everything was just a notch higher with the Callet trumpet, right? So we'll check out the Northern Brass mouthpieces, too. Awesome. Hey, Vedu, good to see you. This wasn't the tune I was telling you about. <laughs> Maybe it wasn't. What tune was I telling you about? I can't remember what we were talking about in the lesson. Were we talking about four? Or were we talking about... We weren't talking about CJM Blues, huh? Yeah, tell me what we were talking about, because I can't remember exactly. All right. Awesome. So we will just keep going. And yeah, let's talk about the artist, right? So Duke Ellington, Duke Ellington, my man, the Duke, a great guy, an American composer, an American musician, right? Um, he, he, you know, defined himself in that way, and he defined his music in that way, too. It was all about American music, and he didn't even always call his, uh, call his music jazz, it's like he called it American music, right? Oh, I, I meant this was the tune you were talking about. Oh, there you go. I got you, Vadu. Wonderful. Yeah, good, 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 good. Then you're here and you can see this and then we can talk about it in your lesson. That'll be great. Awesome. So, okay. I'm going to take a drink of water. <clears throat> mm. Gotta love the water. Keep the lips supple and free to vibrate. All right, so Edward Kennedy Duke Ellington, right? Um, that's what they call him, Duke Ellington. <clears throat> he was born on April 29th, 1899, and he lived through May 24th, 1974. He was an American composer, pianist, and leader of a jazz orchestra, which he led from 1923 until his death over a career spanning more than 50 years. Guys, the Duke Ellington Orchestra was around for 50 years. That's nuts. He was born in Washington, D.C. Ellington was based in New York City from the mid-1920s onward and gained a national profile through his orchestra's appearances at the Cotton Club, very famous place, in Harlem. <clears throat> in the 1930s, his orchestra toured Europe. Although widely considered to have been a pivotal figure in jazz history, Ellington embraced the phrase 
beyond category, right? As a liberating principle, and you referred to his music as part of the more general category of American music, rather than to a musical genre such as jazz. Some of the jazz musicians who were members of Ellington's orchestra, such as saxophonist Johnny Hodges, are considered to be amongst the best players in the idiom. Ellington melded them into the best known orchestral unit in the history of jazz. Some members stayed with the orchestra for several decades. Okay, best known orchestral unit in the history of jazz. I don't know if I completely agree with that. I mean, you've got like Glenn Miller, you know, you've got people like that in the swing era, um, you know, that might be able to, to, to claim that a little bit better than Duke. I don't know. It's like Duke is way up there, though. Tell me below what you think. Do you think that Duke, as they've written here, is the um, best known orchestral unit in the history of jazz? I don't know. I'm not so sure. Write your comments below. <clears throat> Also, give this video a like if you like it. <laughs> so, some members stayed with the or or orchestra for several decades. A master at writing miniatures for 3 minutes, 78 RPM recording format. Some of you don't know what that is. Ellington wrote more than 1,000 compositions. His extensive body of work is the largest recorded personal jazz legacy, with many of his pieces having become standards. Ellington also recorded songs. Well, that's enough. That's enough, uh, you know, to talk about with Duke Ellington. Uh, so, yeah, let's see if you guys got any more comments here. Okay, good. So, yeah, Duke Ellington. He was the man, right? He was part of the swing era. Um, he really, really hit it big in the 40s. It's like, you know, he was, he was, um, I mean, he got started in the 20s and everything, and he was there in the 30s. He toured Europe in the 30s uh, a lot, but in the 40s, that's when it was like, oh my gosh, you know, uh, the war era. That's when he really hit it big. Uh, if you've ever seen a movie where they have, you know, some military members at their military ball kind of dancing, and they have a, a swing, uh, you know, they have a horn band, or a, <laughs> a big band, you know, in the back playing, it's like a lot of times they were playing his music, or he was playing. It's um, that's the kind of music that we're thinking of. You can dance to it. It's swing, right? So good. Whew. So that's the artist. All right. What you what you guys should do now is you should check the description below to download the PDF, right? So we've got the PDF. That is the Chords and Licks PDF I've created for you. I created, created that yesterday. I just wrote a bunch of licks down that you guys can use when you're improvising on this tune. Um, you know, I wrote a bunch of licks down. I, uh, I wrote out the chords. There's only three chords. <laughs> but, but, I will also have it on the screen, right? I will also have it on the screen, and I'll be pointing to the parts that we're doing, so you can have both, right? It's like... That's a great way to do it. So either way you prefer. All right. So the three steps, right? I hope you guys remember the three steps by now. There is a three-step process that I like to use and I like to show my students uh, to learning a new jazz tune, right? First thing is we listen to it. We listen to it. We listen to it over and over again. Then we learn the head. You know, we learn the melody. Then we learn the changes and we improvise, right? So that's the part that we're really going to get at today. It's like, that's the fun part. <clears throat> that's the part that I love to do. I think everybody loves that part, maybe even the most, because we're all a little bit narcissistic in that, <laughs> you know, we like it when we get to play the solo, especially as trumpet players, you know, we just, it's all about us kind of a thing. So yeah, um, we're going to uh, learn how to improvise and how to solo on C Jam Blues by Duke Ellington. So let's get started. All right. So let me get that up on the screen for you. We have here. Yes, there we go. The Chords and Licks PDF. Right here. So the first chord we have is D7, right? We're just going to. We're just going to run our drills, and we're just going to go through these pretty quickly. We're going to go through 
all of our different chords. There's only three of them. So you can do it, right? Even if you've never done this before, there's only three. So you can figure it out. All right, so the D7 at the top of the screen that you see up here, right? <clears throat> the D7 chord. This is a dominant seven chord. Oops, changed the song accidentally. So let's highlight this area and put it on repeat and slow it down just a little bit. We'll go 137, something like, yeah, here we go. <laughs> 137 beats per minute. All right, we'll put it on repeat and we shall play. So here we go. that one we'll just move on here to our G7 chord and write me any comments or questions below as we're going through these chords if you have any questions about them if you don't know why certain notes are why they are we can totally talk about that we can talk about the chords also when we get to the licks don't don't be afraid to ask questions about licks and uh, you know just whatever you want to say so <clears throat> All right, we have a G7. We're going to repeat these two bars over and over again. We're going to play our G7. Here we go. <laughs> pretty well that's your G7 chord right that is also a dominant 7 chord every single chord in this tune is dominant 7 right <clears throat> meaning you have the 1 3 5 flat 7 what does that mean for some of you who don't know it's like if we look at the scale you know the scale above it's like just look at the staff you know if you have that D that's on the bottom, you know that that's one. If you go up to E then, that's two. F sharp, that's three, because we're in the key of D, right? So there's an F sharp. If you go up to G, open finger, that's four. A, that's five. Kind of a thing, you see what I mean here? 
And then um, the seventh, the flatted seventh, right? It Okay, so the seventh would have been C sharp. But since it's the dominant seventh, that means it's flatted. So it is C natural. Oh, right? It's C natural. So, yeah, that's our seventh. So if you go one, three, five, seven, it's like we know it's going to be D, F sharp, A, C, right? And uh, I can't sing. You know, <laughs> a lot of us guys can't that play the horn, but that's okay. It's like, it's good to be able to hear the pitch, though, and put it in your head. It's like you should be able to sing it even if it doesn't sound good. Like, see if you can sing it on pitch, right? One, three, five, seven. Because I guarantee you, if you can sing it, you can play it, right? Because all it is now is putting the fingers down, and you know your horn better than you know how to sing. <laughs> it's like, well, there's controversy there because you know how to talk, and so I won't even go there. Yeah, let's keep going. A7, right? Our A7 chord. Yeah, let's just run that. Hey, what's up, Donnie? Good to see you, man. Oh, yes. Donnie is awesome. He's always there for me, no matter what. I hope you're doing good, Donnie. I hope the construction work is going nice, man. I uh, hope that you're having a great summer, you know? So, all right. Watch the YouTube video of him doing this piece. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, Paul. Oh, my gosh. He is amazing. Uh, if we're talking about Duke Ellington, his stuff is just great. Okay, so let's keep going here. We have A7. We're going to put that on repeat and just do this chord a few times. Then we're done with the chords already, and we'll go right on to licks. So here we go. through the chords wow that was fast so we're gonna move right on to the scales here are the scales that we can use over C jam blues by Duke Ellington gotta love it all right let's see who's watching here good we got a few people still watching wonderful stream health is good um yeah so guys what I really like to use, honestly, uh, even more than a D7 chord, and even more than like a D7 bebop scale, I like to use the D major pentatonic, right? D major pentatonic, just like we have at the top of the screen right here. That's really what I like to use. It's like, why do I use that? Well, because it's a happy sound. And I just really dig that happy sound, you know? Now, I don't use that scale through the entire thing. Um, I do use different scales for different sections, but it's like over the D major chord, I like to use the D major pentatonic because it's got this happy kind of, uh, you know, neat, just kind of like um, skipping your step sound, right? Clark Terry. Clark Terry loved pentatonic scales. Uh, and Clark Terry was the happiest sound in jazz. Um, oh, yeah, I have him right here, right there. <laughs> it's always backwards. There's Clark Terry for you, right? So Clark Terry was the happiest sound in jazz. He used a lot of uh, major pentatonics as well and minor pentatonics, but a lot of major pentatonics. So, yeah, let me just show you how that goes. It goes like this. <clears throat> you 
can articulate it in different places. Kind of a thing. It's like that's your D major pentatonic right there. You can also do patterns of it, right? And we're going to hit some patterns below in just a second. But yeah, let's jam on that D major pentatonic for just a second here. So you can get that under your fingers. Here we go. So now you got your D major pentatonic under your fingers. So if you like that sound like I do, because I just kind of like that happy sound of it, now you have that, right? And you can use that over the D7 parts of this song. So good. And we'll do patterns in a second here, but let's move on to the D blues scale. I wrote here, use sparingly, right? Use sparingly and tastefully because you can overuse it. I don't want to hear 27 choruses of uh, blues scale. I really don't. And I think that most people don't. <laughs> they just don't, right? So uh, what you can do is you can use that blue note. I'm talking about the tritone, uh, that A flat, but use it sparingly and use it with a purpose and know where it's going. It needs to resolve, right? So if you play that A flat, it's like you need to resolve upward to an A or downward to a G. But let me just play a chorus here. Oh wait, I'll play the scale for you a couple times, then I'll play a few choruses, you know, using the blue scale, just a chorus or two, and so you can actually see how it's used, right? So here we go. It's really bluesy. You know, it works in a blues. It's just that we shouldn't use it all the time. So here we go. Let's do a chorus or two on it so you can see what that's like. chord it's like I had to play my g7 bebop scale I love to do that uh, and I left the uh, D blues in the dust uh, <laughs> so yeah but that's how you use that so you know I just wouldn't recommend doing it all the time you can learn it but then kind of put it in your back pocket kind of like I talked in the other blues and in the other blues video uh, kind of the same thing that I said in that video right it's like you want to learn it but don't overuse it Okay, so let's keep going. We have licks, right? Licks, we have a G7 lick, a D7 lick, we have an A7 licks, we have lots of licks. So we'll get going with that. Let me check the comments, see how you guys are doing. All right, goody goody gumdrops, still got people watching. So, so let's just keep going here. Yeah, drop a like on this video if you do like it you know, so that I'm boosted in the algorithm and so that more people can see this. 
Uh, that would be just dandy. But now is the fun part. Licks, right? Licks is where it all comes to play. Because how you can form a solo is through an idea, right? Just like one little idea, just one little lick. Um, so you can take that lick and you can play it just how you thought about it. But what's cool is that over time, it will evolve if you let it evolve, right? <laughs> it's kind of boring to play it the same exact way every time. So I let my licks evolve. It's like they do change over time. And even as I've been, you know, prepping a little bit for this stream, it's like um, the first day that I was improvising with the CGM Blues, uh, I was doing, you know, the licks this way. And then I kind of like displaced them rhythmically. I would like put them later on. <clears throat> or I would change one note. Or I would kind of make them longer or whatever. So it's like that's, how, that's what you can do with licks. It's like they evolve write them down it's like get a lick book get a lick book eventually write your not eventually get it now get a lick book write your jazz licks your blues licks write everything down right put it down on paper so that you won't forget it and just the act of writing it down on paper with your graphite memory aid will help you remember it long term even if you don't look at it again and then it'll evolve over time and it'll actually become a little bit different and, and that's okay and that's kind of cool because that's innovation, right? So, all right, the licks. We have a G7. We have a G7 lick first. So this is kind of a lick um, that it's, it's kind of a little turn, right? And I didn't know exactly how I wanted to write it down on paper here or in the notation software because you could write it down several different ways, right? But what we can do is I'll just play it. So, <laughs> so you see what I have in my head here uh, because it might or might not be what you're thinking. So yeah, what I'm doing is this. Actually, I'll play it without the turn first so it's easy. You can lick my fingers. In the chord tones, right? The seventh. Now I'll add the turn in. This is the fun part. Ooh. Right? So that's the whole G7 part of the lick. Now we have the D7 part of the lick, right? So it's the same pattern, it's the same exact thing, guys. But what we're doing is we are going up a half step to the major third, right? <clears throat> so that it actually, the pattern actually follows the chord changes. So here's the second part where it says D7. I'll slide it over so you see what I mean. Okay. <laughs> Let's play the whole thing. Here we go. I kind of like to use a little bit of a um a lip bend or I, I kind of bend my airstream right there on that G before the F sharp. See that? I scoop up into it. I kind of like to do that. I think it sounds hip. I just like to kind of add that in there. Um, so yeah, let's put it to the music. And then you can try it. As you guessed, I'm sure that you probably guessed this, it's like um, it's over the G7 and the D7 chord that's right in the middle of the song, right? So you can just use it right there. So let's give it a try. We'll go back and forth, you and me. We'll jam. Okay. <clears throat> Ooh. 
can make your own you know but yeah it's like um, that's one of the licks that I like this has to be an enormous amount of work to do these videos great lesson can't tell you how much I appreciate it hey thank you so much Paul I really appreciate that like that's really nice of you yeah it is it is an enormous amount of work uh, that's for sure it's it's just I timed myself yesterday as far as just the computer work to like getting everything <laughs> uploaded and everything running and uh, so this is much faster than it was before because I have I have an actual workflow you know that I have written down it's like do this do this do this do this and I modify the workflow to get faster um, so to create that workflow and make it really really good so that everything would move faster and that honestly took me like a full week of work like just that's what I was working on uh, for about 12 hours a day just to figure out how do you get the OBS streaming software to work how do you get this to work how do you what's the workflow uh, once I got it it's moving a little bit faster now but my faster moving is that it took me seven hours uh, yesterday to just set up the the technical side and make the thumbnail <laughs> and everything like that so totally worth it though it's like um, I love doing these streams and and when you guys write comments like that, you know It just makes me want to do it all the more. So thank you for watching really appreciate it Paul Donnie They do all you guys Yes, okay, so that was the first lick. Let's do the second lick here. I Think there's a lot of people at marching band. So we have a little bit lower numbers today watching and uh, you know also uh, I didn't really advertise this one like I usually do. Like, I usually go on Facebook and advertise a little bit. I didn't do that, so I think that's why the numbers are down a little bit today. But that's okay. We'll keep going here anyway. And the video will be up on YouTube forever after. So, yeah. Okay, that's the first lick. Now we have a D7 lick, right? You got a D7 lick. This one is kind of fast. Kind of fast and ferocious. Um, and I keep changing the end of it over and over like I just keep modifying it a little bit and tweaking it because um, you know I just feel different at different times when I'm playing this lick there's a lot of ways that you can end licks like the cadence of it sort of a thing and so yeah okay but here's how I wrote it yesterday at the time I'll show you I'll play it for you So hopefully you kind of get the point by that. It's like I just kind of wanted to create a descending line that had some triplets in there um, That's going down on a D7 chord, right? And you can end it in different ways. You don't necessarily have to end it like I did there You could totally um, Just switch the ending you could go up to the third you could go up to the seventh 
you don't have to stop on the tonic every time. In fact, that gets pretty boring if you keep stopping on the tonic. <clears throat> so let's try something different. Let's end it in a little different way. Here we go. tongue that note let's try going up a little bit after we go down <clears throat> the sixth right I want to use the sixth like we were using in the D major pentatonic so let's try that yeah that's how I'm gonna end it it's hard because the F sharp it's like when we're holding that you have to hit it twice if you're gonna be on the beat to hit a D so can go straight for it like that let's just continue the lick as if it's going on a little bit there we go it's like just adding something at the end of it so yeah it's like that is a d7 lick that you can use let's just go on to the next one because that one you can kind of figure out on your own you know without the backing track uh, chord well for the d7 chord but it's actually the d major pentatonic scale right it's like i'm using the d major pentatonic scale over the d7 chord because i like the way it sounds i really do it's happy um so it's like um i'm just continuing a pattern upstairs and you can do all kinds of different patterns this is just one that i like right so let's look at that pattern. Let's play that. <clears throat> let's do it backwards. <clears throat> I'll show you that one right now. I'll show you that little pattern. It's like going with a pickup note, da da, beat one, da 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 da. and I might even mix it up a little bit and then you use the pattern and just use a pattern in D major uh, pentatonic right that's your goal right now just use a pattern in D major pentatonic here we go you first
know if you got some out of that. And so let's also do just basically a little lick that popped into my head. See if you can figure it out. Uh, you can look at my valves and everything. I'm just going to do a little eighth note line. <clears throat> first that we just came up with and then I reverted back to the D major pentatonic and tried to put that in so yeah that's how we can use that one let's move on let's see what you guys are doing in the comments section see how everybody's doing thanks for watching you know I hope that you're getting some uh, something out of this oh, oh no I'm, I'm moving it in the wrong direction so there we go Here's the next one. It's going to be in G7. All right. So let's see here. Okay. Awesome. Still got a few people watching here. So G7, right? We've got a lick we can do in G7, and we can do the same lick in A7, as you see above, right? Because... That's what you want to do. It's like it makes a cohesive whole to your solo. If you can do a lick in one chord and then transfer it over to the other chord, but actually play it <laughs> with the pertaining notes of that chord, it'll sound really good, right? So that's what we're doing right here. We're going da 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 triple D da da triple D da da kind of a thing. And it's like you always want to go da da da. B A D D at the end. You can always do that if you need to. That's a little lick in and of itself, right? So here's the G7 lick. Here's how this goes. <clears throat> in A7. So <clears throat> you want to do it like this. And yeah. And then if you want to end that it's like you could just add the little tag lick that we had um, on the G7 lick because it's like that tag was like a D7 kind of ending, right? And you kind of want to do that and not an A7 ending because it's like we're about to go right back to the D chord, you know? It's like, so I wouldn't necessarily do it in A7 uh, right there. I'd probably still do it with the same exact tag that we did. So like... Okay, so what did I do right there? It's like I continued on with the progression after we finished this part. 
I went to this progression and I kind of did this thing where it's like I was hearing the the D7 and the G7 chord going back and forth. So I was using that chord in there, right? So yeah, it's like you want to go back and forth between the F natural and the F sharp. Between our G7 chord and our D7 chord. That's kind of a cool thing to do. You can play around with that. Um, yeah, let's go on. It's like... We're at our last chord, guys, and I might make a few things. Okay, now you can see that entire little chord at the end. So that goes over our entire bottom row of chords, as you see there. Oh, stay there, buddy. Okay. And essentially, we're just going to loop that, and you'll see how this chord fits over the top. It's kind of a... I don't know, you tell me if you like the sound. I'm debating whether I like the sound of it or not. Cause it's like, I might, you know, in reality, choose a little bit different combinations, combination of notes. Cause I might not like exactly just the feng shui of how this sounds, you know what I mean? Um, so but you tell me if you like it. So here we go. Boom. <clears throat> Start it over because then I'll do the pickup right. <clears throat> Start at the beginning. I'll do the pick up right, pick up right, and start on the right chord. So I'll highlight it. for just a second so it's like on the d7 chord that we have uh written there our little lick it's like i should have put a d natural well either way really it's like you could play d sharp or d natural on the d7 uh note the last note of that measure the c you could play it c sharp or c natural because it does resolve to the d so you're fine but it's like i kind of like to play it um C natural. Eh, actually, I don't know what I like. I just know that I've been resolving to C sharp on the very last note, right? Well, not resolving to it, but I play a C sharp and then I resolve to the D to end the, to end the lick on the next chord that doesn't really exist on this loop, right? So you can do it either way. Okay, I'll do it. We'll, we'll go back and forth again on this on this lick <clears throat> here we go resolved it with the D at the end even though we don't have that written so at the very end of the lick I resolved it going up to the D to the tonic 
of the entire song, right? So yeah, that's how we do that. Um, limiting yourselves, guys, and limiting ourselves, you know, it's like that's the best way to learn jazz. When we limit ourselves, then we get good at one particular problem that's happening, right? We get good at one problem, and then uh, we get good at this little problem over here and this little problem over here. So when we put it all together, we have things to say, and we actually know all the nuts and bolts of what's happening so we can make a cohesive solo, right? Um, one of the things that can really steer us wrong or kind of throw us off is when we, uh, we just kind of go nuts, right? And, and we haven't really done our homework yet, and we just try to play all the notes under the sun. <clears throat> and I'll be the first to admit that I'm one who gets uh, <laughs> who gets caught up in this uh, this kind of bad mantra, right? Where it's like uh, I'm kind of a an energetic guy, so it's like I got to tell myself to slow down, you know, put some space in my solos, uh, and really play something that's clear. And so that's what we should all strive to do. It's like, uh, well, if you're an energetic guy like like me, it's like you want to slow down, and you want to just relax. And you want to just make a good cohesive solo put space in between your licks and everything good if you don't know what to say like if you don't have enough to say it's like learn some licks steal this download this PDF from my site uh, the link is in the description so you can download it and yeah you can steal my licks you can keep coming back and stealing my is steal my licks forever right as long as we do this so good Okay, yeah, that's all the licks. Um, there's a thousand little things that come into my head that I could have written down, but it was like, yeah, should I make this two sheets or one? And yeah, I feel like I have enough things on paper after after one uh, sheet of paper or one PDF paper for this one. So good. All right, let's see who's watching. Still got some people watching. Wonderful. Uh, thanks for jamming, guys. It's like this is really fun. Um, and actually, let's do a little bit of a jam on our way out here, like we always do. So yeah, time to jam for real. We're going to play the head twice. It's kind of a boring head, isn't it? Now, we could make it interesting, maybe by picking up the tempo. Let's go like 155. Yeah, let's make it interesting by doing that. Uh, so we're going to play the head twice. Then I'm going to solo for a chorus. Then you for a chorus, then me, then you. We're just going to go back and forth for a little while. Then we're going to play the head twice at the end. This is regular jazz standard form. And that'll be it. So yeah, should be pretty fun. All right, so let's just do that right now. Boom.
trying to throw that in there so really it's like the reason I didn't put the melody up on the screen for this stream is because it's so easy right it's like all it is is a a a a a a a d kind of a thing so there's not it's I didn't I didn't think that it was worth justifying the space on the screen to put it up right so yeah you can figure that out it's just playing a's and d's but then the tag is like this that uh, you'd want to add at the end of the gig right you want to go like this F sharp G A flat A B C sharp D right <laughs> kind of a thing I'll do it one more time for you we'll get going here all right and that's it let's see if there's comments see what comments we have oh stop moving that thing and then we'll get out of here so yeah my lip didn't quite make it to the end but hey thanks again have a great weekend hey you too paul thank you so much thank you steve really appreciate you guys watching absolutely hope you learned something hope it was fun and yeah i guess we will see you guys next time over and out bye